it's a lot of work keeping up with all this stuff. And uh, on this land here, all of this there's I always lived on this land when I was born. We all lived side by side. All the houses was in a row. There's a bunch of us cousins. I was always told, you do not let nobody touch your brother or your cousins. And I want to make sure my people get treated right. And ain't nobody going to run over them no more like they used to. It ain't going to work no more because we stick together, you see. Chief Roger Collin, A.K. Thunderstick. I live on by Bubby. My daddy always told me they only made two kind of people in this world, leaders and followers. He says, if you're not a follower, you're a leader. Back off, back off, don't rush me. Which my daddy was a white man. My mama was in. I watched my grandpa learn from him, and he, he would teach me. This is my grandpa, Chief Paul Rand, Clarence did the dare. He, he would teach me, tell me, like somebody didn't have enough groceries, he'd go and buy groceries, uh, stuff that he farmed, he would take it to him, and we would go with him. He would take them clothes. He would raise money and take money to them and stuff like that. When they died, he buried them. But, you know, I, it comes with the territory. You ask me what I think about this land. I love this land. I've been here almost 70 years. And like I said, I know every tree on this land. But you got to understand, when you're a chief, you inherit all the land. My name's Belinda Brooks. I'm vice chief of the tribe of Bayabubi. The chief's family is the Dizidares. Since the days of White Smoke, this family has been together. Every chief of our tribe has lived on this exact land, the spot where we're sitting right now. Three chiefs buried on this land. White Smoke got captured seven days after he was in the Spanish missions. He was born. When he came through, he come down the side of the back. They had a trail on the right-hand side of the back. See, when he got here, the Chittimacha was already here. The way he was, what we call a real leader. So he took over real quick. He became chief. We own one of the Indian trails that come off the Great Temple right there. This is one of them that goes back to Canty. The other one goes to Wind Parish. Other ones go back toward Natchitoches. This trail in the woods is 32 miles long. This one trail right here. Five minutes on this horse, I can ride to the prairie where the buffalo grazing land used to be. It's the prairie, Clear Lake, Black Lake, and Saline Lakes over here. The reason we lived here because it takes a lot of food to feed a tribe. That's, they didn't have far to go to kill a buffalo. So all these trails that we're riding on, that I've been riding on all my life, all our ancestors rode these same trails. The priest back then gave the names to the Indians. They gave him the Desidera name, but his real name's Powderface. His name's Joseph Senior Desidera. Here is a picture of Powderface and his wife. You look, you see a bandage on her hand where she shot through the arm with an arrow. Other tribes attacked the women when the men was out. Get cattle and contraband in Texas to carry back over here. Well, he caught up with that chief and killed him and scalped him. She lost two fingers later on. It's been here 200, over 200 years we all lived here. The reason we lived here on kind of Paul, because we had houses all together. And uh, all old houses is old now, they fell down. But this is the oldest house on Five Bubby, and it is still standing. It's about to fall down, but it's still standing. Uh, here's his son, which is Hawkeye. His name is Joseph Jr. The baby he's holding, he had him at 70 years old. That is 
Marshall Dizzardary, which is called Goose, he guarded the Butte Mound for over 70 years. He'd leave out in the morning, go back there and stay in the dark and come home. Seven days a week. He never wore a pair of shoes. The Butte Mound is our burial ground. That's where White Smoke and Two Moons was the last Indians to get buried in our mound. I first used to come back here with my grandpa when I was real little, with my great-grandma. There wasn't nothing about five trees on it. And now you see all these trees in the 70 years done growed up. And all my life, since I was five years old, I've been took back there, you know? And so when the elders would take you back there, you know, it's a real quiet place, you know? Sometimes you can feel it, sometimes you can't feel it. I go by myself, I can feel it more. I can feel the spirits when I'm here. And um, and most people can. It's, it's such a peaceful place. You can hear the leaves rustling. This is White Smoke Stone. He's buried here. White Smoke is buried here standing up with a sacred pipe in his scalp. They don't have White Smoke wrote on them. They got two logs on fire with smoke coming up. On her grave, her stones, they got two round moons because her name was Two Moons. A lot of people don't know their fourth great-grandparents like I do. It seemed like I knew them all my life because I got drilled. This is how it all got started in our history. He roamed these lands. He's protected these lands. You come into his land, he would kill you. He protected his people. He did a lot of stuff back then. My great grandpa, Felix Desidere, Chief Squarehead. He married Grandma Faye. This is my grandpa, Chief Paul Rand, Clarence Desidere. Great grandma, that's his mama, Grandma Faye. They donated to this their land to the Baptist church. My grandpa built the Baptist church for the first deacon in the church. Later on, he became the preacher. See what Christian Horny Baptist Church, I was raised right here. Everybody that went to that church was Native Americans that was in the tribe in the beginning. We're here today to look at the wagon wheel. So y'all come on, I'll show y'all the wagon wheel. Come here, girl. Paddleface spotted them first. It was 12 Scottish Stellum coming here to, to kill our game. They was hunting for furs. Paddleface went back and told his daddy White Smoke. They camped out right here. So we call this the wagon wheel massacre. And when I was a small boy, about five, six years old, you could still see a piece of the, the running board on the side of the wagon. But now, over about 65 years, a lot of stuff has rotten. The only thing you're going to see here is part of the wagon wheel. And it, you can see it's been burnt, and the uh, spokes is all falling out of it and everything else, but it, it's been here for a long time. When we was kids, we knew to stay in the house because got up daylight, you had to go outside. You didn't come back to dinner. You didn't come back to dark. You didn't go in the house. We played under the by bank all the way to the lake. I'm talking about this four or five miles from your house when your little kid's small. Well, they had a guy down here, which he was in the tribe. He had about 40 wild horses, you know. One of his horses had barbed wire wrapped around his back leg and then growed in his leg. And every time I would see that heart, I, I tell my cousins, I says, I'm going to get that barbed wire off the, that horse. So I climbed up the tree one day. I was about seven years old. When that herd come walking on that tree, I jumped on that horse's back. And away we went. That horse trying to throw me and everything, running through the woods, trying to drag y'all along. 
I bet you I made 20 miles on a horse chasing that whole herd around and around and around. Well, once he finally gave up, I got a vine put around his neck to hold him, and I got to looking real close. The bar wire done growed up in his leg. There wasn't no way to get it out. From that time on, me and all my boy cousins, we climbing trees, and horses come through there, we jump off them, and away we go. Some of them get horses running trees, fall down with us, and drag us off, tear our heads almost off, jump in the water with us, and everything else. But we learned how to ride horses back then. Whoa. Keith don't ever tighten up the saddle too good. <laughs> Put my foot in there. Put my foot in there. All right. You got it. Take you. One day, the Army rode in here and took eight of our kids. They're going to send them off and get them civilized. Well, Hawkeye, which was Joseph Jr., he didn't like that at all. So they beat him up, put him in chains, and took him to Nyackers. He stayed in prison for three months before he come back. Well, when he come back, we can't act like a tribe no more. We got to act like white people, black people, Spanish or something. We can, we're can, going to be a tribe, but we ain't going to act like it. We ain't going to let people know we exist. So what he did, he built the other school, the old school before this school. He built it for our kids to go to that school and get educated down here ourselves because a white man wanted an Indian to get educated, you know, civilized. Well, over the years, the school got in real bad shape. And after he died, my great-grandpa, his son, built this one here in 1905. And all the Indians went to this school until my time was to come to this school. Then Nicholas Parish decided we all go to the public schools in Akadish, and they shut this down, and then that's when my grandpa made this out a community center. That's where we all met. Guy is from San Antonio, Texas. Okay. I don't forget his name. I used to know his name. But my grandpa, square head, caught up with him a few miles down the road and shot him off this mule with a shotgun. He got away from him in the woods. He made it back to San Antonio, Texas, and three weeks later, he died. My grandpa and my grandma Pete, my great-grandmother, told me about white smoke. First time I ever heard about white smoke was about the third meeting I went to. First couple, I just sit there and I listen, you know, but I won't go outside and play, you know. I. I, I was asked every 10 minutes, why do I have to be there when all my other cousins are doing what they want to do? And uh, that's when they first started telling me about white smoke when I was five years old. And so I learned a lot about white smoke, how he got here, where he came from, and all that. And I learned uh, he was what we call a tormentor. He attacked you to show his people now, White Smoke, uh, he had a run-in with a lot of different uh, people because they was all the time coming in here. And they had what you call a red stage, like a cloth. And if you win your fight, you got that cloth. It's went on most of his life, which he was a big man. It's hard to beat a big man. So I thought that was, you know, pretty cool back then, you know. Because I didn't know what scalping was and all that. I learned real quick. But the way the white man treated him, the Spanish and everybody else, you know, he had to learn how to fight, you know. That's Yamak Island right there. It's an Indian name. I used to know what it means. I, I don't know. Yeah, it's a big island. The mound is on the island. Get on up. First time I went to Yamak was about five, six years old, too, with my grandpa. All Native Americans in this area used to go to Yamak. A little bit more. 
Hey, jump out and catch a boat. That's the main one right there. It's the Almach Mayon. That's what you call cypress these. That's the root of them cypress trees right there. People started using them for crafts, yeah. arts and crafts. They used to cut them down and make Santa Clauses and Noels and stuff like that. It's against the law to cut them down. The state of Louisiana now It's killing the cypress trees. You got to remember the water's way down. Do your hands like I did hefty loud. Hell, reach way down and catch the sand. Go. Boy, they so ignorant. They, they couldn't survive. I know deep down inside I can leave my home and I can survive. My grandpa, he had three sons and four daughters. His three sons, which he was the chief, they all drank. He took me under his wing. My aunts and uncles, they used to say, you special. My grandpa, constant, you special and my great-grandma Faith, I didn't know what special meant. It took me to about 14, 15 years old to figure out what this special meant. I was 16 years old, he passed away. And so that's how this come all about. You know, how I know the stories, that's how I know what I was put here for. That's how I learned all about our tribe. We kept it a secret. Because when I went to school, we we never told nobody who we was or what we was. You know what I'm talking about? But we all stuck together. This tribe, the Dizdares, they stuck together. Roger has this thing inside of him that he wants to continue what his forefathers did. If any any of the family needs anything, they come to the chiefs. If they need food. He grows the food. He will harvest the food. He takes the food to the elders. You know, they may be elders that are not in our tribe. He works on those gardens passionately. The spring garden that goes into his summer garden and then the fall garden. The responsibility that they take on their self. You don't see many people in today's world accept that responsibility for their families. Uh, my great-grandmother, I heard first, one of my cousins, she knew a little bit. She used to walk up and down the by singing these songs. So I'm talking about the Bayou Puppy walking up where the water was up and down singing these songs um, to our ancestors, uncles and grandpas and great-grandmas. Hey, Yaho, it's a, a religious song. We started teaching our youth to step in, sing some of these songs, and play some of these songs and the rattlers, uh, the jingles and all that. Uh, we ain't going to be here forever. I done lived most of my life. And so if they don't learn now, we done lost all our heritage. I always remember this, because one day you're going to be our leader. Family comes first. Protect your family. I always remember what I'm telling you.